just sometimes you're aware that you're not everybody's favorite. Back in the early 2000s, Michelle Williams was one of the biggest stars in the world. But that changed after Destiny Childs broke up. Even though Beyonce and Kelly Rowland have managed to make their names even bigger over the years, for some reason we keep hearing less and less from Michelle with each passing year. So what really happened to Michelle in her career? And why isn't she as famous as everyone thought she would be? Without wasting any time, let's dive straight into this story. Destiny's Child, originally Girls' Time, was formed back in the early 90s. Initially, the group started out with six members, but in 1996, after they changed their name from Girls' Time to Destiny's Child, the group ended up with just four members, Beyonce, Latoya Luckett, Latavia Robertson, and Kelly Rowland. Four years after this, Latoya and Latavia left the group, making way for Michelle to make her entrance for Destiny's Child reign to really begin. Throughout the course of its existence, Destiny's Child released three studio albums and they were well on their way to becoming girl group icons. But then in 2006, they broke up and everyone went their separate ways. As Entertainment reported, Michelle released her first solo album when Destiny's Child were on a group hiatus. Her album, Heart to Yours, became the best-selling gospel album of the year. So it's easy to imagine why everyone thought that Michelle was going to do amazingly well as a musical artist after Destiny's Child's breakup. But sadly, that didn't end up being the case. Although she's been releasing songs ever since the split, her success doesn't quite live up to the amount of success Beyonce and Kelly have gotten over the years. Everyone knows this, including Michelle. But instead of letting it get her down, she's taking it for what it is. Recently, she spoke about how she doesn't take herself too seriously and that there are pros and cons to being who she is. For starters, when she's walking down the street, she doesn't get interrupted by a lot of people, unlike some of her peers. And according to her, it's nice not to have people shoving their phones in your face all the time just because they're trying to take a picture. The most she gets is the occasional nod. And sometimes when she's shopping, everyone wants to be her sales associate because they think she wants to spend a lot of money. As for the cons, she told Rolling Stone that sometimes it hurts to not be recognized for your work, but she doesn't feel that hurt often because money eases the pain. She had this to say, money isn't everything, but I love that I can make a living out of doing what I love to do. I can help provide resources for people to help them get the help they need or branch off and do something in their career. The money isn't just letting her live the life of her dreams. It's also allowing her to follow her passion for mental health. She actually has a book and a podcast, both called Checking In. According to her, the purpose of starting all of this was to positively impact the lives of as many people as possible. She wanted to give people the language for feelings or responses they feel just so they can know that they're real. Her hope is that she can give people the courage that they need to face their struggles. The same courage that she wishes she was given herself. Michelle has been very open about her own mental health struggles ever since she was a child. While on CBC's Radio Q, she spoke about how she's been dealing with depression from a young age. Although some people might think it's fame that caused this, it's actually been an issue for her since long before she had any taste of fame. If anything, the first taste of fame she had with Destiny's Child helped her in battling her depression in a way. In her words, she was just so busy that depression simply wasn't on her itinerary. But soon enough, it came crawling back. Michelle described the feeling as the one you feel when you're swimming. But for her, it felt like swimming in a sea of darkness. It made her feel so helpless. And at one point, she supposedly felt too comfortable with the thought of taking her own life. She'd even go as far as talking to God, telling him that it was okay for her life to end because she felt like she had lived a pretty decent life and didn't have anything to do here anymore. Thankfully, she found a way to get past this phase of her life. Before starting out her music career, Michelle was pursuing a degree in criminal justice and wanted to be a forensic psychologist. The crazy thing is that the day she was meant to shadow a county coroner at an autopsy, she decided to hop on a plane instead and shoot the Say My Name video. And just like that, her music career kicked off. Thanks to her initial high, Michelle didn't think much of her previous mental health struggles. If anything, she thought that that part of her life was well behind her. It took her almost three years to realize that this was, in fact, not true. And she decided to tell the group manager that she thought she was struggling with depression. But he did the worst thing anyone could have done in that situation. He made her feel like it was all in her head. According to Michelle, he told her about how great she and the girls were doing. They were making hits, about to go on tour, and they were practically living the dream. So it made no sense for her to think that she was depressed. And Michelle bought into what he had to say. At the end of the day, she left thinking that maybe she was just tired or homesick. 
Michelle kept ignoring the fact that she was struggling, but she finally decided to take back control of her story in 2018. And she did this by checking herself into a treatment facility for depression. Initially, she didn't want everyone to know that this was what she had done. She just wanted to get the help she needed and move on with her life. But the information got leaked to TMZ, so she had to make a post about it on Instagram first. Michelle stayed checked into the facility until 2019, and when she got released, she started working on her memoir. For her, her memoir was a way of taking back the narrative. When she was asked what she learned from writing her book, Michelle revealed that she learned how to take risks even though other people might start to see you differently. In her words, people have seen her in all types of different ways, but writing her memoir cemented her on a new path and purpose. The very path and purpose she's on now, and she couldn't be any happier. As for her music career, it's never too late to go back. That is, if she decides to go back. But anyway, what do you guys think? Do you think that Michelle is going to give music another shot? And what are your thoughts on her mental health journey? Let me know in the comments below.